Barbecue. Welcome once again to another Boost Booze and Barbecue. This is Andy. And this is Jojo. And Jojo, we are doing episode 18 today. Oh my gosh. I know. Our podcast is officially old enough to smoke. <laughs> not exactly. Well, well not an organ Not anymore. an organ anymore. Oh, man. <laughs> nope. <laughs> my rights. <laughs> <laughs> Smokers' lives matter. Ugh. Smoker, vapor, you, whatever yeah. you want to do. You can cut that part out. <laughs> That's a horrible joke. <laughs> well, hey, uh, we are coming off of a pretty incredible weekend, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we, we are. Triple birthday bash. Yeah, we did. And man, it was, it was really, really good. It was yes. really fun. Yeah. I did not get to sleep in on Monday. No, me either. And I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> Monday was a long day. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. You had to work. I had uh-huh. to drive to Newport and back. Ugh. Yeah. But hey, you know, it's uh, it's all for the fun and mm-hmm. it's all for the pod. It was worth it. That's right. Rip. And I hope you guys are enjoying the photos that have been going up. Uh, I posted some mm-hmm. and we've got a few other people that are going to be posting some mm-hmm. and we're going to try to put them up and feature them as much as we can as we can. And uh, man, it was it was incredible. I did four racks of ribs. Oh, they were so good. Oh, my gosh. They turned out really, really good. Yeah. I, I went away from my my normal three two one that I do. Mm-hmm. I did like five hours on smoke mm-hmm. and then two hours. Hours wrapped and then another hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. Uh, unwrapped and, and just letting it roll oh, using man. my char griller offset smoker. I'll tell you, man, for an inexpensive offset smoker, that thing works super well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can testify to that because I've been eating the stuff that's coming off that thing and it's good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's really impressive what you can do with a cheapo smoker. Yeah. I had this little offset smoker, a river grill yeah. brand is what it was called. River grill. Hmm. And it was, it was cheap, man. Yeah. Yeah. It was real cheap. I've never cheap. heard of River Grill. It's one of those Home Depot brands. Oh, okay. And, uh, I mean, it was, it was cheap, like in price and in mm-hmm. feel. Okay. But, uh, I put out some really, really good stuff on that. It's a weird thing with the thinner metal smokers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like you can do a little more on the cheap. So instead of going out and having someone make me steel tuning plates to go in my big, thick, expensive smoker, mm-hmm. I can just cut up a couple of aluminum pans, the, the like drip pans that you oh, put yeah? in an oven. Okay. I can cut those in half and then just sort of space them out inside of the barrel. And it does a fantastic job of hmm. keeping the temperatures even. Okay. And there's just little tricks and stuff you can do with the, the cheaper, thinner smokers that may or may not work mm-hmm. on, on the bigger ones, but uh, it just makes it very user-friendly when you're starting off. Okay. And yeah. uh, there was a fella on the Smoking Meat Forums, I think, and, and he had posted up about how he just, he just got one of those river grills. Oh. And, uh, and there were some people who were saying, you know, hey, that was a mistake. You got to take it back. Don't Ooh. don't start with something that cheap. And I just told him, hey, man, I started with something like that. And yeah, yeah it's cheap, but it's going to work. It's going to do everything you want it to do. Do a few modifications. Whenever you're getting the cheapo smokers, I always recommend to people get like some um, expanded metal to make yourself oh. a firebox with and then get some of the lava tape to put around the, the lid to okay. keep it sealed well. And then if you want to take it a step further, and I do recommend doing this, you get some expanding piping that you would use for a dryer or something. Oh, And yeah. you you find a way to attach that. It varies from smoker to smoker, but you mm-hmm. find a way to attach that to the inside of where the stack comes through. Oh. And then you give yourself just a little, a little once around, you know, have it come out a couple, six, seven, eight inches, and then curve back around and what that allows the smoke to do Hmm. is it's a little extra course of action that it has to take and so the smoke gets to stay in the chamber a little longer okay and it also has to travel a little further to get out and that really really helps to even out the temperatures from side to side on the smoker wow great tips man yeah yeah little little stuff like that that you just got to kind of keep an eye out for and if you do those things you can take a 150 dollar smoker and turn it into something really good that turns out some really Really good stuff. Awesome. I got mine. Normal price, I want to say, is like 197 and mm-hmm. I bought it end of the season last year for 80 Oh, wow. So also kind of know when you're shopping. Uh-huh. If you're, if you're trying to buy one for the summer, sorry, guys, you're just going to pay full price for it. Yeah. But uh, if you're looking to buy something more towards the end of the season, you can get some real good deals. Real deals. Cool. Not just a deal, a steal. 
Wow. (laughs) That's awesome. And man, we did a ton of drinking. I had (laughs) some really uh, good stuff that I had gotten. Well, me. (laughs) I did did my fair share, but I'm pretty sure you had me beat. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got a hundred pounds on you. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope that I had you beat. If not, we'd be taking you to the hospital. (laughs) Right. I got some Florida Cana rum, mm-hmm. 12 year. And then I also got a Knob Creek single barrel, small batch cask strength mm-hmm. whiskey. Mm-hmm. And huge fan of that whiskey. Huge mm-hmm. fan. But you do have to be careful because it's 60% alcohol. Yes. And it's actually pretty smooth. And so it goes down easy. Uh oh. <laughs> And somebody brought me a bottle of Basil Hayden's yeah, and, um, oh, a bunch of different beers that we cracked open. Mm -hmm. Uh, I cracked open a Schmaltz Brewing Jubilation 9, which I'm pretty sure was from 2005. I don't remember now. I'm pretty sure. We'll, we'll put a a little thingy up on it about it on Facebook and Instagram. I was worried that we were going to pop it open and it was going to be vinegar. Right. You know, but. We got it open and it was super delicious and I was very happy, very mm-hmm. happy. Mm-hmm. We passed it around, you know, yep. it was, it was great. And then, um, oh, beyond the ribs, we did a nine pound pork shoulder. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The pork shoulder. Yeah. That pork shoulder yeah. turned out a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> oh man. A lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> I tried something a little different. I did cherry instead mm-hmm. of apple. Okay. And, uh, man, it worked. It yeah. really worked. Yeah. <laughs> It was so amazing. Oh, and the typical chicken wings that I always mm-hmm. do. That's and good, of course. After wrapping those ribs and, and leaving them wrapped for two hours, mm-hmm. the meat juice that ran off of them, the schmaltz that yeah. ran off of those yeah. ribs, <laughs> I did my absolute best to reserve that and had a friend come out and help me. And so as we were pulling those ribs out of the tinfoil, mm-hmm. we were draining them off into a little bowl. And then I took that inside, added a couple more spices to it, some ketchup. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife came around and added some things to it because, you know, she's just got the palate for yeah, it. Yeah, she, she just can, knows. Yeah, she can make anything <laughs> amazing. taste amazing. Yeah. And so if it tastes amazing to begin with and then she touches it, it's going right. to be like doubly amazing. Yeah. And uh, we turned that into some kind of a wing sauce. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I started putting that on the wings, they just evaporated. Oh, they were gone. Like, I was lucky to get one. I, I got was, one. I was lucky to get one. I got <laughs> yeah. one. We had 25 people show up, and I'm pretty sure five people didn't get a chicken wing. Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have to cook, well, a lot more of those next time. Yeah. But I always say that. That's like a, a thing for me at a party at my house. Chicken wings are a little bit of a, an afterthought for me, unfortunately. Oh. It's not that I don't want to make them. It's just I've got other stuff on that takes quite a bit longer to sure. cook. Yeah. And the chicken wings, you know, they're on smoke for two and a half hours. Okay. At a higher temperature. And, and so it really is not one of those things that you just put on and in the mix, right? Mm -hmm. There, there's something that need like a dedicated space and dedicated time. Went ahead and got those going and they were gone in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, any of my friends that are listening, so sorry you didn't get one. Better luck next time. Yep. Gotta be quicker than that. Oh my gosh, now I want to see JoJo in waiters. <laughs> in waiters with, a, with a chicken wing on a fishing <laughs> yes. pole. Yes. Oh, I almost got it. <laughs> That's a great idea. We're going to get that, that photo. That sounds like fun. I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> photo shoot. <laughs> So, yeah, speaking of photos, we'll have a bunch more of those up Mm -hmm. uh, as the time goes along. And uh, we have got here a Sierra Nevada Narwhal Imperial Stout. Mm -hmm. And, ooh, it's from 2015. Yeah. And I only brought one glass. I'll go ahead and let Joe have a taste while uh, I take a look at this. I've had this beer for a long time. Um, Love it. It's always delicious. It's got tons of coffee and chocolate in it. It's got a little bit of bitterness, and I almost want to say there's some smokiness going on. Going on. There is definitely a smokiness in mm-hmm. there, but it's it's rich. It's like decadent. The mouth feel is very creamy and smooth, and you get this roasty smokiness flavor. You get a hit of chocolate. Very dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the eighty five percent stuff. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Eighty five percent cacao. Yeah. Mm, Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I always do this to myself. I always buy a bunch of these and I sit on them, Mm -hmm. but then I just drink them and drink them and drink them and drink them. Well, it's so good. It is so good. (laughs) 
<laughs> it reminds me of the Kentucky breakfast stout that we had, the KBS. Oh, yeah. I've got three Blanket. of those bottles left because I keep just going, I'll just, I'll have one more. It's fine. And now I'm down to three and I'm really trying hard. Oh, man. I'm trying to sit on them and Ooh. not use them. Yeah. So I recommend to anybody, go out, try to find this beer, grab it, mm-hmm. sit on it. Uh, if you can't sit on it, go ahead and just drink it because it's going to be amazing. But if you can sit on it, mm-hmm. it only gets better with time. Yeah. Either way, you're not going to regret it. No way, man. Yeah. No way. This beer, always a classic. Yeah. And this really kind of punctuates my taste in beer. Oh, absolutely. Big, roasty, mm-hmm. dark, imperial. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons why I just don't do a lot of homebrew is because it's it's a little bit easy, at least for me, to screw up a, a batch of an imperial stout or imperial porter. Right. And you've now used twice the ingredients that you would in a regular beer. Right. <laughs> I'm thinking we're right by Oregon State University. Mm-hmm. And they've got that fermentation science program. Yep. And I'm wondering if I should have some students come over and show me how it's done. Ooh. We do a little show and tell. Ooh, that's an excellent idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, yeah. We're hashing out show ideas on right. the show, folks. Right. <laughs> I hope you appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the show, we are not in our normal space. We're actually recording from deep within JoJo's lair. (laughs) It's cut into the side of a mountain. Right. Hence the echo. Volcano, actually. Volcano. Being inside of a volcano explains why it's so hot in here. Yes. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. It's a little muggy. Yeah. But it makes makes for a great hideout. No, it really does. It's like you've got a built-in sauna. Yeah. If you want to turn up the AC just a little bit for your next guests that come over, Mm -hmm. I would recommend it. Not that they'll complain because they'll be chained up in the uh, (laughs) lower portion. The dungeon. (laughs) The dungeon. Yeah, the dungeon. I did like the moat of lava, though. That was pretty cool. Hey, thanks. I worked really hard on that. I wish that drawbridge hadn't malfunctioned as the intern was trying to come across. That was unfortunate. That was not intentional. That's why we don't pay him. Right. Now I don't have any problems with, you know, payroll. Yeah, he he signed a waiver. Nothing changes. Yeah. Speaking of which, we're in the market for a new intern. So Mm -hmm. if you're interested, go ahead and just hit me up at Andy at Mm -hmm. com, And uh, we'll get the uh, interviews underway. Yep. We'll get you signed the waiver. Gosh, what's that going to be? The fifth intern that we've had in... uh, Three months? Yeah, five. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like Trey, we didn't expect that testicle to explode. Ooh, so yeah. stuff happens. This is a very, it's it's a fast, high impact. Yeah. A lot's happening yeah, during yeah. this podcast. You yeah. Know? Well, and the good news is that was his third testicle. I mean, that's right. why they, they call him Trey. Right. Um, so he still got two. He's still he's still good with two. He, he just lost the one. Right. But you're right. It was his third one. And so mm-hmm. he's, he's fine. I mean, he's. Yeah, it's just. Instead of his nickname being Trey, it's now Dos. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, Dos, uh, shout out to you, buddy. Thanks a lot for all the memories. Yep. And uh, we hope that your recovery is just as speedy as your time with us. Yep. <laughs> and along the same lines as dangerous activities, I have got a pet peeve that I have got to complain about. Yes. This is, dude, this is driving me crazy. So I've been taking some back roads to work lately mm-hmm. because it's a little bit quicker and it's a little bit more interesting oh, for yeah. me. And yeah. so I, I like the more interesting drive. But what is with people? What type of person does this? All right. Let me let me explain yes. to you Il- what's please, going on. Please illustrate. So the other day I'm driving to work and mm-hmm. I'm on this back road and we just get out of a corner and this car is doing like 35 miles an hour in front of me. And it is a narrow road. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so I move out to pass. And as I'm beginning to pass them, they swing into my lane. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And if I had been going any faster trying to pass them. Like, was he swerving? Like, he's trying to get mm-hmm. off? Yeah. Like, no, I mean, like, was there something in the road? He was trying to, like, swerve around it. Or was no. he just trying to cut you off? He flipped me off after oh. I got back behind him. Yeah. <gasps> Rude. Yeah. Crazy. Like, wow. tried to wreck me wow. for whatever reason. And then, you know, continued to do 45. And so I backed off a little ways, got a running start on him, and there was nothing to do. Yeah. 
But then before that, I had someone where I was getting ready to pass them. We had just made a corner okay. and, and they had slowed down to 20 miles an hour for this 25 mile an hour corner. Oh, geez. So of course I'm going to pass you, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I put my foot into it and I start to accelerate. And then I realize I am not accelerating very quickly past them. And so I stick my foot all the way into it. Mm-hmm. And it takes a long time to get past them. Wow. And this is, this is in the morning. I have a morning routine. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've got my coffee and I'm thinking about a lot of different things sure. that I'm going to be doing during the day, right? Uh-huh. And so I'm not paying too much attention. I finally get past this person, but they're right on my bumper. Whoa. So instantly I'm thinking, well, they sped up while I was trying to pass them. Yeah. Look down at my speedometer and I am doing not triple digits, but <gasps> very close. Whoa. Yeah. The person, when they saw me start to pass, they just decided not going to let this guy pass and they just mashed on the gas. See, this is why driving slow is every bit as dangerous as driving too fast. There is no one on the planet that can disagree with that. No. You're absolutely right. Yeah. This is why there, I'm pretty sure there's a law somewhere in the books. I don't know the details around it. The point of it is it's just as much illegal to go way under the speed limit as it is to go way over the speed limit Mm -hmm. because it's just unsafe. Mm -hmm. You know, people end up pulling out on skinny two lane roads trying to pass you when you could have just been, you know, going a respectable speed to begin with and everybody would have been fine. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And we need to be doing a little bit more of that. Yeah. Um, you know, people who park it in the fast lane going 55 mm-hmm. miles an hour. And in Oregon, our speed limit's 65, which right. is stupid. But, right. uh, you know, there it is. And people will do that. They'll just get in the fast lane and they'll do 55, mm-hmm. 60 miles an hour. And you will cause miles long traffic backups. I can't tell you how many times I've been doing the traffic weave, trying to make my way to the head of this whole thing, just to see some idiot in their Honda Civic Mm -hmm. in the fast lane sitting next to like a a box truck truck or something. Yeah. Just pacing them. Just door to door. door. Guys, what are you doing? (laughs) I don't know. Has everyone just gone completely insane? Have we all forgotten that this is the passing lane? You don't just move into it and stay there. Well, and even beyond that, uh, newsflash, there are other people on the road. Other people in the world, even besides you. Well, people just don't, they don't care anymore. We're, no. we're in the age of narcissism. <sighs> it doesn't make me very sympathetic to people who no. want to tell me about the trials and tribulations of their life. I'll mm-hmm. tell you that. But it's infuriating, but at the same time, it's scary because those people could have wrecked me mm-hmm. easily. Yeah. Had there been a car coming and that oh, person man. just continued to accelerate yeah. until I finally couldn't get past them. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, think and of the you, consequences of that. And I trust myself to be able to look and go, whoa, that car is coming up really fast. I need yeah. to go and slow back down right. and move over. But not everybody's going to do that. Right. I've seen plenty of close calls on narrow back roads. Mm -hmm. We've seen plenty of wrecks that happen on narrow back roads because people just, they're trying to pass too early or Mm -hmm. whatever. You get one idiot in there that's swerving into the oncoming lane to try to stop you from passing or Mm -hmm. they're trying to speed up so you can't pass or whatever. That is the most dangerous thing you can do. Oh, yeah. Banish them all. Yes. We just need to make like an island where all of these people who they're jerks, but they probably don't think that they're jerks. Mm Mm-hmm. How does that saying go? If one person is a jerk to you, then they're a jerk. If everybody's a jerk to you, you're the jerk. There it is. There it is. Yeah. I have no doubt that these people just think that the whole world is incompetent. Yes. And they don't know why. Right. And why is everybody so rude? And right. what are, what's the problem with all these people? Well, why can't they just understand from my you viewpoint? You reap what you sow. There it is. You reap what you sow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that is a saying from thousands of years B.C., so it's not a new concept. No, no. I, I think it's in quite a few different religious texts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, it's been around a while. That's what we like to call a universal truth. Yes. The sky is blue, water's wet, the red hot magma will flow underneath of Joe's lair, yep. and some people are jerks. Yep. What's that saying? Do unto others unless you think you're a lot smarter than they are. That's it. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Man, I, I get my fill of that. I work with people that are exactly that way. Oh. And they're just like, well, everybody's an idiot except for me. Ooh. Typically, that means you're the idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, at least I can now say that I did a little racing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. How, mm-hmm. how are things with the race car? Things with the race car are great. The last autocross event that I went to, I kind of compare my times to a guy 
that I've been racing with, with for the past three years or so, mm. he has a first generation neon that he has swapped the two liter PD cruiser motor into and he races on our compounds and he's really fast mm. in his little first gen neon and i'm usually anywhere from two to two and a half seconds behind him so at the last event i was one second almost exactly behind him wow yeah and that's just the suspension that i had done up at pre racing in portland the coney yellow adjustable mm -hmm. dampers and the ground control coilover sleeves you have and not had that suspension long enough to be that used to it even. No, that's the only the second event that I've done on this new setup. That's pretty impressive. I was pretty impressed. And this was a tricky course setup because it was in the PIR South Paddock area mm -hmm. or South Pits area, whatever you want to call it. And they have paved sections, pieces of that area with new asphalt recently. So there was one particular part of the course where you were doing like a big turnaround sweeper mm -hmm. corner and you went kind of uphill and onto some really nice new sticky asphalt mm -hmm. and kind of started your turnaround. And then when you turned back down the hill, <laughs> you got into the old, super nasty stuff. And the first time I took that corner at like a really decent speed, mm. I hit that old pavement and had zero grip. I was literally just sliding. Like my car just pushed hardcore. I took out like five cones. Oh, geez. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, noted. <laughs> Break early. <laughs> well, you aren't exactly set up for a rally cross. No. So, um, that's what this feels like. You know, the Salem Fairgrounds is mm -hmm. exactly the same. Yeah. Like, pockmarked. And yeah. Full of holes and right. chunks. And, yeah. Oh, and yeah. they had, they had talked about at the end of last season, the news from PIR was that they were going to repave that entire South Pitts area. Really? Like totally repave it. And so we show up this year for the first event and they paved like, a large patch of it and then a couple smaller patches here and there. So that was kind of disappointing. Mm, yeah. But it definitely makes for some interesting autocross. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was like, man, this is so challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to remember when you're going to be on that new payment and then when that new payment's going to end and you're going to mm -hmm. be back on the old stuff. Um, That's kind of the hardest part about real autocross not yeah. the not the stuff that they do at the muscle car shows no uh but but like the actual Jim Connor style yeah autocrosses is it's just as much remembering how the course goes mm -hmm. as it is anything else oh yeah I, I mean that's that's a huge part of it you don't have a bazillion cones that are lining out these mm -mm. very specific lanes for you nope. you've got a couple cones yeah. that are out in the center and yeah. you have to go around them a very specific way right well in fact this last event i went to my first time out i always go a little bit slower my first time out because i only walk the course once because it forces me to look ahead when i'm driving it and then my first run i always take a little bit slower so that i see i can look and see okay i need to go here i need to go there yeah. i actually missed two whole gates really i dnf'd my first run because i missed two gates oh man i hate that <laughs> i hate that but i knew immediately as soon as i did it as soon as i started to turn too early i saw them and i was like oh i forgot that you go that way first and then back this way mm. so i i was fine after that but um but yeah everything's a factor a layout pavement is it hot is it cold is it wet is it dry and apparently how old the pavement is now mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you've got like a multi surface thing going on right that's crazy. Yeah. That reminds me of, um, I was watching a video of, you remember Koi's S2000? Mm -hmm. Friend of ours, my cousin, a really good racer. Yeah. He had this awesome S2000. It was actually painted up like a four loco can for a little while. <laughs> it was. It was yellow, gray, and black. <laughs> but he had big fat meats on that thing. Oh, he man. ran 275, uh, something, 18s mm -hmm. all the way around. Nice R comp tires. Yeah. And that car was really, really quick and it had this titanium exhaust. Oh yeah. And it right had a really unique sound mm -hmm. everywhere he went. People were just like, what is done to is that, that thing? Yeah. yeah. It was that titanium exhaust. Yeah. But I was watching a, a video on Facebook. It comes up in the Facebook memories mm -hmm. of uh, me riding along with him in an autocross. I, <laughs> You're reminding me that at a certain point in the video, uh -huh. we're we're driving along, and he kind of 
pauses and hesitates, and then you can see me in the passenger yeah. side. My head turns to the left, and I make this point. <laughs> Your point yeah. And obviously, no, I'm telling way. them, yeah, <laughs> there was a gate right there that Oops. you missed. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. It does. Or in my case, it happens to the worst of us. <laughs> Hey, yeah. this uh, this racing talk reminds me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a request from a fan. Oh yeah, a young lady by the name of Mazda Muta, uh, like Mew, and then to huh. on Instagram. She messaged me and said, "Hey, I've got a topic for you: mm-hmm. roll bars." Mm-hmm. So she's got a Miata, mm-hmm. as the name would suggest. Sure, she's been looking at roll bars. Yeah, and uh, apparently has been getting lots and lots of messages, she says, 15 times today from guys saying, hey, you don't need a roll bar. And she screenshot a few of them for me. Just don't roll your car. What? Uh, You're more likely to hit your head and die. Uh, I'd rather die than ruin the look. What? Um, Miatas never flip over. Uh. And so she messaged me and said, hey... Would you ask Jojo what her opinion is on Miata roll bars? Okay. Well, the short answer is whatever venue slash type of racing that she wants to do is likely going to require that she has a roll bar in her Miata. Yep. It's a requirement. If you don't have it, you don't race. That's your short answer. That's when you get a roll bar. And your longer answer is I had a Miata. I've had several Miatas, mm-hmm. and uh, my first Miata, I put a, a hard dog, hardcore sport, double yep. diagonal roll bar into, mm-hmm. and uh, it quite literally saved my arm uh, yeah. and could have saved my life. I mm-hmm. was hit by a, like a Ford F-250, I believe it was, and uh, hit at a pretty darn good clip, too, yep. and it bent the roll bar not very much, but... The amount of damage that would have happened to the Miata oh, on the man. driver's side would have been devastating. Yeah. But instead, I had that roll bar right there, and I have no doubt, no doubt in my mind yeah. that that thing saved at least my arm. When I went to the emergency oh, room, they were pulling glass and bits of the, the truck's paint out of my arm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was a very close call. Wow. And I have no doubt that if I did not have mm-hmm. that awesome roll bar that, by the way does a lot more to stiffen up the car than you might realize it really Mm -hmm. does yeah it saved my life i have no doubt so there it is there's your testimonial right there you don't have to roll your miata over no for the roll bar to be a a very necessary thing to have yeah and it's like joe said if you're gonna do any type of racing at all you need to have that bar absolutely it doesn't ruin the look no if anything if anything it tells people that hey yeah i drive this car on the street but guess where i also drive it at the track. Absolutely. Yeah. And by the way, it gives you one more thing to cover in like a cat vinyl. That's right. Or, or you know, cats shooting laser beams with their eyes uh-huh. stickers. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Paint it purple, sticker mm-hmm. bomb it with cat face stickers. Yep. Boom. Done and done. Yep. You're both safe and you're stylish. Heck yeah. It's the way that I did my Miata. Mm-hmm. I'm just throwing that out as a recommendation. It was the uh, Hello Kitty stickers. Five yes. years. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It took me a long time to save long up all those time. Hello Kitty stickers, mm-hmm. but I was able to sticker bomb the entire roll bar and I was able to do a lot of my interior with those stickers as well. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was, it was great. Awesome. They're all over the dash. Mm-hmm. Shifter mm-hmm. handle. I mean, it, it was like when the airbags went off, uh, <laughs> confetti, confetti went into the air. <laughs> Hello you, Kitty had, you actually had a button and you would just randomly glitter bomb yourself just for the fun of it. Hey, you own a Miata. What else are you going to do? Right. <laughs> I always tell when people liked watching me climb out of that car. Mm-hmm. It, it was like the Miata was giving birth to me. That's what it looked like. <laughs> yep. Crawl out of that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loved that car. So, hey, yeah. Miss Mazda Muta. Yes. Don't listen to any of them. Don't listen to them. They're either haters or dumb. Right. And get that roll bar. Yep. Be safe. Yep. It's going to do performance things for your mm-hmm. car. It's also going to make it a lot safer. So yes. go and do it. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Thank you. And uh, speaking of race cars, we've mm-hmm. got a really, really funny smoking dealer smoking a dube for you guys today. We have got a 1989 Toyota Land Cruiser right hand drive, mm-hmm. Japanese imported. 
turbo diesel. I'm yeah. I'm digging it. Yeah. I'm digging it. Now here's where the smoking dealer smoking a doobie comes in. He wants fifteen five. Ooh. Yeah. And I know mm. I know that it's very expensive to get it these is. cars imported. Yes. And uh this one looks pretty pretty good. It looks really nice. It's the, he says that it's fully loaded. It's got a 24 volt electrical system. Mm-hmm. It's the high roof with a glass power moonroof. Yeah. That's the good news is the moonroof still works. Uh, the bad news is that none of the other windows work, but they're oh, all, that's, yeah, it doesn't. They're all power if, if they worked. The driver's window does, it says. Oh, that's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. So it has the four liter inline six turbo diesel engine. And those are, those are pretty, pretty tough motors. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's four wheel drive, man. I, yeah. I love the seats. They're Recaro seats. And I don't know if you noticed, they have adjustable bolsters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, yep. And they're stitched with turbo in them, mm-hmm. which I just, that's, that for me is almost worth the 15.5. <laughs> is it? <laughs> no. Good for, good for you. <laughs> Really a, a pretty cool looking car. Yeah, and I, I think it a is. pretty decent example of one. Mm-hmm. That bumper, that's that's kind of driving me crazy. Yeah, I don't really like that. Like I understand that there's a winch on the front of it, and obviously that needs some some space. Mm-hmm. But there's like these tray looking things. <laughs> they look like they look like broiling pans. <laughs> it really does. It, does. it really <laughs> juts way out there in the front. Yeah, I'm not really digging that. Uh uh-uh. uh. But. Hey man, that is, this thing is, is an iconic piece of 80s history. Oh yeah, absolutely. I kind of love it. This might be, as Joe likes to put it, the perfect car for someone else. Yes, it is the perfect car for someone else because I just don't know. I don't know who this guy's market is. I don't know who his buyer is. I really don't either. Yeah. I have no idea. I think he might be hanging on to this one for a while. (laughs) (laughs) His ad is really clever. He's got the good and he lists all the great things about it. And then he's got the bad, which is where you find out that some of the windows don't work and it needs new tires. And then he's got the ugly. And the first thing is asking price reflects as is condition. Which is to say my price is firm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I don't know, man. Pretty interesting rig. If it were five thousand, I think I'd drive up there and get it. Oh yeah, I, he. I think he'd sell this in a in a hot second if he asked five grand for it. The fifteen and a half. That's where my mm. issue comes in. Yeah, I don't know, listeners. You're gonna have to tell us. Would you buy this car? Yeah. Would you buy? Well, not would you buy it, but would you pay fifteen five for a 1989 Toyota Land Cruiser with 215 thousand miles on it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. This one's a toss up. Yeah. Listeners, you're gonna you're gonna have to chime in and let us know what you think. Yeah. And we will of course have the ad for this linked on the website as well as everything else that we've talked about today on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh we'll go ahead and put it up at boostboosbbq.com. Don't forget to go by there, check the website out, see what we have going on, throw us a like, throw us a subscribe. The shop is going to be up real soon. We're going to have mm-hmm. some fun t-shirts and uh, some bottle openers and things like that for you to pick up from the website. It's going to yep. be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And make your way over to our social media pages because that's where a lot of our photos and videos and stuff get posted. Uh, Facebook.com slash Boost Booze BBQ. We're on the Instagram, Boost Booze BBQ. Joe's got her own Instagram. On, on Twitter, I'm at Joe Francisco. And on Instagram, I am the real Joe Francisco. And on Twitter, of course, I'm at Boost Booze BBQ. You can reach us on either of those. Mm-hmm. Send us an email, either Andy or JoJo at BoostBooseBBQ.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up. We've got some interviews coming up with yeah. a few of our favorite local distilleries. Yep. We get to talk to a local Porsche expert. That's mm-hmm. tons of fun. Mm-hmm. We're going to have some more photos and videos of that coming up real soon. And uh, it's going to be a great time. So I really hope you guys stick around. Don't forget to, like you say, like, comment, subscribe, but tell a friend, tell a yeah. family member, tell an enemy. We don't care. Listen right. to listen, you know? <laughs> We're just trying to spread the word and let people know what's going on. And it is going to be a really good time. And we got tons of special stuff coming up for you guys. So thank you so much for listening in. Mm -hmm. This is Andy. This is Jojo. And we will see you guys next time. Boost Booze and Barbecue.